Joe Tai, a new Atom based state manager for React on this blue collar coder. I'm Jack Harrington at Jaher on Twitter. So we've been moving away from systems like Redux. They're large, they're singletons. Now we're moving into component state, but that leaves a gap. You still need something where you want to be able to share component state between components that may be in very disparate locations in your component tree. Now, a couple months ago, we looked at Recoil from Facebook, which stores state as individual atoms and allows you to share those between components. Now there's a re-implementation of that called Jotai that we're going to try out in this video. So what we're going to do is implement our Pokemon list filtering system in Jotai. It kind of shows all the basics of state management that you'd want to cover. Let's go check into the code. All right, so this is the site that we're going to build. It's a searchable list of Pokemon. You've seen this before. So I'm going to use MPX create React app and call it Jotai Pokemon. Now bring up VS Code. And I'll remove the contents here. Don't really need that. Now down in the description, there's a gist that comes along with this video. It has the CSS, so I'm just going to copy that and then paste that into app CSS. All that does is basically just set some widths and make the input nice and wide. Now let's install Jotai using yarn add Jotai. And then start it up. And that looks good, nice and blank. So the first thing we're going to do is bring in Adam and Provider from Jotai. And then set up our initial atoms. So we'll have a Pokemon atom that has an empty array. And a filter atom that has an empty string. Now down in the default export, we'll change that into a function and wrap this thing in a provider. I'll start by adding a filter input, which we will define as a function. So I'm going to define filter and filter set as an array. And then I'm going to use use atom and give it the filter atom. And that's going to be essentially like a use state. And then we'll turn out an input where the value is the filter. And we have an on change that sets the filter. And there we go. But does it work? So let's copy and paste that code down into app. And now all I want is the filter. I don't want the setter. And I'm just going to drop in there into a div below the current value of the filter. And now as I type, voila, easy state. Look at that. So easy. So now also in the description is a gist for the list of Pokemon. So I'm going to go over there and then click on the raw button. That's going to give us the raw URL for those Pokemon. I'm going to copy that and then paste that in here as a constant for URL. Now let's copy and paste out the use atom because we'll use that in app and point it at the Pokemon atom. Next, I'll define a React use effect and that's gonna run whenever this component is loaded. So when the application starts up, I'll define this as an empty array, meaning it should run once and only once. And then we'll fetch that URL and get the JSON. And then we'll use Pokemon set to set the Pokemon. Now, right down here, we'll add a new div and JSON stringify Pokemon so we can see if it comes up. And there you go. Look at that. A nice list of Pokemon. Not particularly well formatted, though. And it doesn't filter, of course. 
So let's create a new thing called Pokemon Table. And in this case, we're going to just get the Pokemon from that atom. And then return a table width of 100 with a T body. And we're going to map through the Pokemon. Take each Pokemon and create a row. Pretty standard. And that looks pretty good. All right, well on our way, but of course it's not filterable yet. So we need to go and do that. So let's go and use that atom and get the filter. And then we'll add a filter to our map here. Take the Pokemon name in English. Lowercase it. And then see if it includes the lowercase filter. Yeah, all right, looks good. Now I can type and it looks great. But there's actually a cleaner way to do this. We're gonna go grab that Pokemon filter and then create a new atom called filtered Pokemon atom. And we're gonna give that a function. And that function is gonna take a get and then paste in our code. And now we need to go get the Pokemon. So we'll use get and then get the Pokemon atom. And the same thing for the filter. We need to get the filter atom. And what that does is it creates a dependency between the filtered Pokemon atom and the Pokemon atom and filter atom. So that whenever the Pokemon atom or filter atom change, then Jotai automatically knows to go and update filtered Pokemon Atom because they have that dependency. So let's go and change out Pokemon for filtered Pokemon Atom. And then change out the name for filtered and remove the filter. And it still works just fine. But now we've removed all the logic for the filter out of the component and put it back into what was effectively the model. So one more cool thing we can do with Jotai is we can actually initialize atoms asynchronously. So I'm gonna grab the fetch and then change out Pokemon Atom to be an async function that returns that fetch. And now I save and when I do, I get an error. And that's telling me that, well, I've got this asynchronous loading doing, going on, so I need to put in a suspense. So let's go do that. So let's go remove the use effect and then add a suspense where the fallback is a loading div. And there you go. Really super clean. Look at that. We've got the base app that has a provider as well as the suspense. We've got the app that just has the visual components in it. We got the Pokemon table that just depends on the list of filtered Pokemon. And then we got the filter input that does a very traditional kind of use state getter and setter. And then finally the model, which is composed of these Jotai atoms. Okay, well I think atoms is a pretty clean way of storing all that state, but I wanna know what you think. Let me know in the comments. And that's not the only way you can interact. You can also hit us up on our new Discord server where you can chat with us live. You can also get our newsletter, which comes out every week and has a link to the next video a day earlier than everyone else gets it. It's super cool. All that is in the description, of course. If you like this video, feel free to like it and share it with your friends. If you really like these videos, hit that subscribe button, ring that bell, and you'll get notified And the next time a new one of these videos comes out. In the meantime, be happy, be healthy, and be safe.